gentlemen, welcome back to another build video. Today, we're going to be going over another- Whoa, what the heck is this guy doing, bro? He's ruining my shot, man. There's no way. No way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to another Pain the Axe Mag K build video. Today, we're going to be going over our new build that we like to call the Casino. So, pretty much to sum up this build, it has a lot of RNG elements into it. It makes it a lot of fun and just really interesting to play. It's one of the most satisfying builds I've ever played on. So, without further ado, let's get into the details. Alright guys, again for our first set, it's a set we've ran in the last build video. It's going to be called Dates of Trickery. Uh, what Dates of Trickery does, it gives you one of five major buffs every nine seconds if you're doing damage, which are going to be Expedition, Protection, Mending, Heroism, and Vitality. So, something the Magnet K really benefits from this set is the Expedition and the Mending. Those are generally things we don't normally get on our toolkit. And we can get, still get Mending from a Fragmented Shield, I believe it's called, but you know, that's not a very valuable skill outside of that, so it's kind of cool to get the major mending from Major Trickery. Expedition all around is just amazing for PvP. So when you get one of those, like you hit the jackpot. Obviously, protection, very helpful for just staying tanky. Heroism is going to build your ultimate more, and vitality is healing received. So all those five buffs, super helpful to have in a PvP fight. Definitely worth slotting this set. I like to run this on the back bar, so I do uh, gloves, belt boots and then a restoration staff to make that a five piece so it's only active on the back bar right there so that's how you're gonna want to slot that all right next for our damage set is a new set that came with deadlands it's called kind marcher's cruelty so what this one is gonna do is give you max health stamina recovery 1400 ish armor for the five piece is pretty much what makes this build like a casino so is when you deal direct damage you apply five random major debuffs to enemy within eight meters of you for 18 seconds so those five major debuffs it could be Major Breach, Major Cowardice, Major Defile, Major Maim, and Major Vulnerability. So, what makes this build like a casino is that it being paired with Dates of Trickery is like you can get five random self-applied buffs to you. But now with Kind March Cruelty front barred, you can apply five major debuffs to the enemy. And you kind of hit the jackpot whenever you get that major vulnerability or uh, Major Defile, because then that's going to just make your target super weak. And you're going to do so much extra damage to them, and if they have Defile on them, they're not going to be able to heal. So when you get one of those two, like, that's when you kind of hit the jackpot. So it kind of just adds to that, like, casino feel, because you never really know what you're going to get on either set, either, like, Days of Trickery or Kind's March. But, like, no matter what you get, it's still good in all ways. Like, each uh, buff or debuff is still very useful. But there's just some that are more useful than others. So, like, that's why, like kind of call it like the jackpot whenever we get a vulnerability or like a defile or a major expedition from like data trickery so it just kind of adds to that casino feel it's a lot of fun all right so for our monster set again uh i like to primarily use magma incarnate um however you could swap this out for several other things depending on what you're doing so if a teammate you have uh, has magma incarnate on like you don't both need to run it like you could swap this out for a blood spawn You could put on Balorg if you even want to have even more of a key casino field You can throw on engine guardian too. So like it's kind of more RNG like oh, what kind of um Resource pool am I gonna like get it like it could be health it could be stamp it could be magicka So that could kind of add more to like the style of this build by having engine guardian on and I've been using that a little bit It's been a lot of fun, but I primarily will use magma incarnate just because like it's just such a solid set it gives you recovery and it can give you damage and uh, armor and it also gives that to your teammates as well too so like i play a lot of battlegrounds so i like to run magma and karma as my primary to really help out my team and myself at the same time all right guys our last two items here are going to be two rings so we got a mythic ring on here i like to run the mark and ring of majesty uh it's going to give you 100 weapon spell damage and 1100 armor for every three piece set you're wearing and again we're running two five piece sets here so the current bonus we get from this is 200 weapon and spell damage and 2300 ish armor um i really like this ring because it pairs super well with magma incarnate they both kind of have the same effects so they're like doubled onto each other it just kind of like amplifies that effect oh, however you could run um the malakath ring but the only disadvantage to having Malakath Ring is that you're not going to crit as hard. Like, maybe you'll get, like, a good whip crit. It's not going to hit as hard as if you didn't have uh, Malakath on. But with Malakath, the advantage is you're going to have a more consistent damage of all your dots and whatnot. So it's definitely something to look into if you don't want to run the Marking Ring. Like, either is fine. You can do both um, rings without a problem here. And our last slot. It's just going to be a good old-fashioned Ring of the Trainee, brother. Oh, 
Only reason why we run this, because it's the only set really you can do a one piece of that actually is like good. So it gives us 1400 health. So definitely worth slotting. Like we only had one slot left. So why not throw a trainee in there? It's definitely worth having on. All right, guys, next we're going to go over our back bar skills. This is going to be on our Desert Trickery bar. First skill we have is Rapid Regen. It's a very strong dual over time heal. Next is Engulfing Flames. It's going to do initial flame damage followed by a dual over time flame damage for 14 seconds. Also debuffs the target by 9% of all flame damage they take. So it's good to pair up with your other flame damage abilities. Next is Degeneration. It does a magic damage over time effect for 12 seconds and as well give you major sorcery which increases your spell damage by 20 percent uh next is coagulating blood this is our burst heal we don't really want to spam this too much it is rather expensive to use so you only want to use this when you're like lower hp and you need to get that bump up to full next is volatile armor so this is going to give us major resolve which increases our physical and spell resistance by about 6,000 for 20 seconds it also does an AUE effect when you activate it, which hits targets. It does a do-over time effect for 10 seconds. It also returns damage, like melee damage used in you. So it does like a little bit of damage return. It's good for fighting like Templars and whatnot. And our ultimate, we like to use Ferocious Leap on the back bar. I kind of use this defensively. Uh, I'll go into what our offensive ult is in the front bar sets, but this is good because it's because it gets us back on our feet and whatnot like we use it it gives us a large damage shield to kind of recuperate and like get our health back to full and just kind of like reset ourselves in the fight and whatnot all right guys next is our front bar setup so this is going to be our kind march bar um first skill we have on there is flames of oblivion this skill got a buff it used to shoot two fireballs at enemies every five seconds now it does three so it's a lot more extra damage it hits more targets and on top of that, you get Major Prophecy and Savagery, which is weapon and spell critical uh, rating by 2,629. So it guarantees you crit a little bit more. Very solid thing to have. Next is Burning Talons. So right here, I used to use Ellie Drain. But because we're running Kind March Cruelty, we can get rid of Ellie Drain and put on another skill. Because Kind March um, can apply Major Breach as one of the status effects. So I put on Talons instead. Talons is really good because the dot is actually really strong. The uh, initial damage from it is also like really strong and also gives that ignite synergy if you're playing with teammates that can do a little bit extra damage you get some sustain back from that it's a really good combo to use of talents too so what you're gonna do is like once you debuff them fully like if you're engulfing flames you're burning embers like you have major um sorcery on them and whatnot uh you can use talons on them so they're gonna be stuck in place like generally they're gonna want to roll dodge out of that so once they roll dodge you're gonna whack them with the shattering rocks that guarantees that they drain two big portions of their stamina bar, like, within that first one to two seconds. And if you keep that up, they're going to run out of stamina, and you're going to outlast them, and you're going to beat them in that fight. So that's kind of, like, the tactic of that. You just want to make sure you're draining their stamina, like, a lot at the start of a fight, just so you can kind of, like, rain over them for the rest of the remainder of the fight. But next, um, Molten Whip. So I like using Molten Whip because it's very bursty combo. Uh, what you do with Molten Whip is you gain these stacks called Seething Fury, and I'd call it a three-stack whip. So how you get that three-stack whip is that you have to hit three other Ardent Flame abilities within succession of each other to get up to like three stacks. And then once you have that, your whip is going to become way more powerful. It's going to increase the damage by 33%, and it's going to give you 75 spell damage per stack you have. So that's 225 extra spell damage if you have that three stacks. So once you do that Talons combo, they roll dodge, you fossilize them. That's when you want to hit them with the whip when it's at a three stack. Because that's when it's guaranteed they're not blocking and it's going to do the most damage. And that's how you're going to kill most of your targets right there. Our next skill here is Shattering Rocks. I kind of just talked about it. Um, it's your major stun. You stun them. It goes through roll dodge. It goes through block. You can use it off their uh, CC cooldown. Very good for lowering their stamina back. And also heals you when they break out of it. So that's why I like the Shattering Rocks variant rather than Fossilize. Because that extra heal actually does become very useful. Next is Burning Embers. So this is just a single target dot. It does upfront damage and then followed by a 14 second dot. And what's nice about Burning Embers, it's going to heal you based on the damage that it's inflicted. Like over the uh, do over time effect. So it's 76% of that total damage inflicted. And you can reapply this whenever you want to just get a quick heal off your target. Like, if you let it linger on your target, then reapply it. The heal is obviously going to be a lot stronger. But you can actually just use this, like, over and over again and just get really small, quick heals if needed. So, it's a very good skill to have on there. And for my ultimate, I really like to run the Shifting Standard. So, what makes Shifting Standard great 
is that you can kind of control and lock down areas of this ability and it lasts for 29 seconds so anytime within that 29 seconds you can replace this and just put it anywhere they move to if they move out of it great you can put another one right at their feet it really like puts a lot of pressure on them and it keeps them moving and it really keeps them off of you too because if they're like a melee based target they're not going to really be able to fight in your standard if you want to keep this on them at all times uh it applies major defiles so if they want to sit in it and fight you they're going to have 16 percent less healing that whole time it's a very strong dot and what's also really good about this is that it builds your Seething Fury for your whip. And every time you replace it, it costs you zero resources. So it's a good way to get that Mortal Whip up to a 3 stack without costing any like other form of Magicka or like using any other ability. That's why I really love the Shifting Standard gameplay. A lot of people like kind of sleep on this skill and it's definitely one of the best ultimates the MagDK has. Alright, next guys, we're going to be going over our CP. Um, I'm going to only briefly go over the green tree just because there's only one thing that's good. Uh, it's the Steed's Blessing, so you get 0.4% uh, movement speed out of combat. And uh, overall, that gives you 20% movement speed if you're not in combat. So it's good for just, like, moving around the battlefield and whatnot. It's the only one I really see useful. The rest are kind of just, like, quality of life things. They don't really matter so much for combat and whatnot. Alright, so for our blue tree, I like to use Deadly Aim. It's just uh, single target damage, just a 10% extra. Thaumaturge is 10% extra uh, do over time damage. Master Arm, again, is 10% uh, direct damage abilities. Resilience gives us extra critical resistance. And uh, for a red tree, I do more of the recovery route here. So I took refreshing stride. So when I sprint, I get 500 health and magicka recovery. Really keeps my magicka pull up while I'm moving around and whatnot. Uh, survival instincts takes 25% cost reduction, like core status effects, like roll dodge and things like that. Uh, slippery gives us a free break three every 21 seconds so it makes it so we don't have to use any stamina and whatnot so it really helps our stamina pool and sustained by suffering it's just straight up uh, health magic and stand recovery all right guys the last thing we're gonna be going over is our stat sheet so we do run this build as a breton we pick breton so we can keep our sustain up and keep our skills rolling uh the food we use is clockwork citrus filet and that gives us max health uh health recovery max magicka and magic recovery uh, even without any stam buffs with our food or anything, we still have about 15k stam, which is a very healthy amount to have. Uh, our mag pool is a little bit low, but even with 27k mag, we're still able to accomplish everything we need to do. We still do a lot of damage. Uh, mag recovery sits at 1600. Our spell damage sits at 3300 base. It can go up to about uh, 4700, I believe, was the maximum I got on this of all my weapon enchants and like magma incarnate. And uh, major sorcery up at all one time. It was a very healthy amount of uh, spell damage right there. Our spell pen is a little bit low at 7,700. But again, when Kai March procs that major breach, we will get about 13k ish right there. So it's very good to get some armored targets. Our resistances buffed is going to be about 31k spell resistance and 25 or 26k physical and this does go up when um magma incarnate procs so you get a little bit more resistance out of that as well all right ladies and gentlemen that's going to wrap up all the details for this build uh, i really hope you guys give this build a try on the mag dk because it's just been so much fun to play like i really enjoy logging into this and just like going around never really knowing like what status effect we're gonna apply like the whole like casino rng like gameplay to it it's just so satisfying and it's just so much fun when you get like some of the best status effects applied to a target and you just like melt them in like a couple of seconds and whatnot it's just great we're gonna have some gameplay footage coming out as well as a couple pictures of some of the battlegrounds i've done in that uh video i actually did the most damage i've ever done in the bg in my entire time playing this game so i'm not gonna spoil that right here you're gonna have to go watch the video for that uh, that link will be down in the description when it's uploaded. Other than that, guys, I just want to thank you guys for like taking the time out of your day to watch this build video and support our channel here on YouTube. Uh, we also like to play this build a lot on Twitch, so if you'd like to go over there and get more information on it, I'm usually live seven days a week, usually starting around 10 a.m. PSD. So I'd love to see you guys over there as well. But until then, guys, take it easy, stay safe, and have a Merry Christmas. It's coming up soon, so take care.